I'm going to show you a formula for lighting in a real-time environment and getting the most out of your character. I use these tips and tricks on all my industry projects and it's very easy to replicate. We will go through techniques for managing and placing lights in Marmoset 4 and any real-time renderer for that matter. You've spent a lot of time sculpting, texturing and making materials for your character so it'd be a shame to not showcase that in its fullest potential. Hi I'm Virtus, I'm a games art director, character artist and university lecturer. Welcome to 3D Mutiny where we turn people into industry professionals. If that's your journey make sure you subscribe and like the video and let's get started with some lighting so here's an example of the project with all the lights might seem a few but each one of these lights is doing a very specific thing whether it's um, enhancing some subsurface scattering highlighting areas that i want the person to look at or maybe getting some other features out like a shine on an eye so you can eventually end up with quite a lot of lights uh, fundamentally it's built on the three point light system but usually it's not as easy as that because in certain scenarios uh, the lighting won't look good or we might have a misshaped um, object the way i usually approach it is um, in my stage process is adding our folders and adding lights one at a time and then finally bringing them all back together. The next thing I like to do is take think about what sort of shots I'm going to be doing because every light that I'm going to add its main purpose is to make that screenshot look really good. So for example on art station are you going for a perfect square shot? Are you going for a full screen one or is it going to be rendered on a phone? So all these are important. What I'd start by doing is adding a camera. So in the top left you can go up here and rename this sort of like a beauty shot or um, or number it. I'm just going to call it one. At this stage, if you go into the render tab and then we can change the bottom split screen and change that so it previews from the original one camera. And then in the top viewport, we can basically select that camera and start to move it around uh, with W. So that's our main cam camera. This is camera one. And as you can see, the, the effect happens as we start to move it. So under lenses, we can uh, come into the field of view and just increase this or decrease this. So for a profile shot, I'm going to take it around 50 and then I'm going to adjust the camera back so it's uh, in the screenshot that I want. Also, at the same time, you can activate safe frame. So that means that you can see where the borders are going to be uh, in this one. Let's say, for example, we're just going to do a headshot. So take some time adjusting this camera. It doesn't have to be perfect because you can slightly edit it later. But fundamentally, all our light shots are going to be previewed in this in this camera down here. With camera one, what we can do is in this button, we can just tear it off, maybe put it on a second screen. But for the recording, I'll just put it sort of like bottom right. And that's nice to see what effect our lights are having. So I'm just going to put it down here. So the first step of the process is adding lights to fill. Um, I usually do this with the skylight. And in this section, you've got a library of HDRs. And the HDRs are going to act good for reflectance. So if you've got uh, in here, you've got the eyes and also metals and glass. It's going to reflect that um, that scene. Usually a good HDR that I look for is something that has like a blue sky, some clouds, maybe some mid-tier greens and a darker floor. That's just in my experience what I found to be the best. In this example, this one's called Bridgewater Floor. Um, if you really want, you can also click on the image and that's going to add lights in specific areas but I like to take it from the bare bones. Next, I'll adjust the brightness so I can barely see it. You've probably seen that in games when you adjust the mid-tone values to just see a, like an emblem or something. So I can see what's happening here and then we're gonna add lights on top of that. For organization purposes, I'm gonna come up here and just create a folder and call this lights. In most renderers, we usually have about three types of lights. So clicking this little light bulb up here adds lights. And under that section, you can change the type from directional spot and omni. So we're going to start with directional and create something that's called a main light. So with the main light, what you're trying to achieve is quite a, a harsh shadow, usually to split the, the character in two. So for example, from above, we can change this direction and just make sure that there's a, a long shadow being cast across the face. So Yoda's a bit of a funny one because he's got quite a flat face. Um, but with humans, it would obviously be more spherical and easier to obtain. So I'm not going to sweat it too much, but that's a good start. Also remember to rename them. That's going to help you when it comes down the line. What probably is easiest now is just to press Control D to duplicate your last one. Make sure it's sort of in your viewport region so it's easy to click and manage. I'm just going to drag that one off to the side and come to rotate by pressing E. And this one I'm just going to counter rotate and basically aiming to fill any shadows that I've got. Um, I can turn the brightness down here 
and I barely want this to be applied to the model because I still want that original shadow to be showing. I'd come back to the original main light and just turn that up just so you can see it uh, and make sure to name things. Usually what to do is take the main and fill light and then I put those in a folder and I just call it primary and then obviously make sure that that primary is nested inside of lights. The advantage of that is now that we can turn off the primary light so the main and the fill at the same time because we're going to be later testing different elements. Next stage what we're going to do is add something called a rim light. So a rim light is classically cast from the back and it's used to separate the subject from the background. So from this we create a primary folder. I can just duplicate that and we're going to use this. So rename them first, I'm just going to call it rim one and two. I'm going to look from above and then just adjust the rims so they're the back left and back right. So now what I'm going to do to make this easier and more accurate, I'm going to hide the primary folder and focus on the rim lights, also hide the second light. So the first one what I want to do is just rotate it so it's at such a harsh angle um, that I can barely see the front, but it's outlining the character almost like a silhouette. So as this is the left one, just start to rotate them. Um, what I also like to do is turn the brightness up to really harsh value and then that means we can see the border outline and then at a later date turn, turn it down so it blends nicely together. So I'm just going to do that now for both. So looking at the attributes of this two li these two lights, they're doing a pretty good job so I can see almost like a complete border outline and silhouette of the character. So that's going to make it pop when it comes to the render um, and then I'm going to tone them down once I bring the primary lights back in. So right now it's probably looking a little bit harsh, so I'm just going to tone those two down. Now we're going to move on to the second phase, which is highlighting specific areas of the character. So I'm just going to add a new folder and call this highlights. From here, I'm going to add a new light. And this time we're going to use something different. We're going to use something called a spotlight. So it's uh, what you can imagine with a standard physical light where you can point and shoot and it has sort of like a cone um, angle on it. You can change all the settings of that cone. So change how wide it is, how thin it is. Also the sharpness of the fall off. I usually like to go for quite a low sharpness down here. Um, for this light, I'm basically going to position it because I want the face to be the main attraction. So I'm going to turn the brightness down and then I'm just going to position this in a way where it highlights the face that I want, but also doesn't destroy the shadows that I originally had in the main one. So you can make this as basic or fancy as you like it. I usually like to just make it basic. I'll usually look at this thumbnail down here and see what effect it is having when I move it. So for brightness, I usually move the light back and forth and then the natural fall off sort of changes the brightness. I do like doing that. And then also at this point, I'll probably put a, a warmer color to indicate sort of like a sunlight. It depends what sort of theme you're going for. So just from those lights, we can observe a couple of things. So just by accident, it's sort of giving this cool effect on the sword in the background you can see here. So I might want to make sure I, I'm keeping that element. What things are lacking, I'd say uh, the glass isn't being rendered very well. It needs some more light application there. Maybe the eyes aren't popping as much as I'd like to, so maybe some other lights can enhance that. Um, the spauldrons, those are coming off okay. I can see that these are metal. Maybe additional light would be good to see sort of like the, the leather reflectivency and uh, the roughness of that. And potentially the lower half of the object, you know, I've got an interesting element, which is the talisman. Maybe I also want to make that highlighted so when people see it, they can't uh, miss it. Oh, so we've gone through a directional, which doesn't have a cone. It just sort of does the entire world. We've now gone through a spotlight and that's to highlight the face. The next one we're going to do is an omni and that's just to bring the talisman and the water shader out. So I'm just going to add another light, put it into the highlights folder. I'm going to change this to an Omni light. So basically it radi radiates out at all directions. And obviously you can see the effect it has here. I'm going to pull it down towards um, the talisman and maybe an opportunity to actually put it behind the, the, um, the potion here to enhance it. Turn the brightness down um, and maybe add a little bit of a fake effect here. So obviously the potion is red. Now, if I come and turn this to a red value of the color light, um, it, it's sort of like giving the illusion that advanced lighting technology is happening here and sort of like casting on the talisman. Um, so you can totally fake certain things. I've positioned it here and from the image, it's sort of uh, giving a nice, nice reflectance on that metal. What I'd be careful of as well is not to have too many shadows in the scene. So, for example, I've added this, this highlighter. And under cast shadows, I'm going to decide if this is actually making a big impact or not. It might even look better. So if I untick cast shadows, 
not much has changed and I'd actually say it's a lot better. So any excuse for you not to have a shadow, I'd probably take it. Okay, so now looking at it, I'd say that um, the rim light on the ears is not that great, but it's quite good on the body. So instead of changing the rim light to try and solve everything, it'll probably break other things. I'm going to add something called rim light support. So under the rim lights folder, I'm just going to add another folder. I've got rim support here. This time I'm going to use uh, some Omni lights and see how they work. So I'm going to get set, select Omni, bring it behind the head, just behind the ear. Then obviously I can change the radius of this and how much effect it's having. Um, right now, what I'm doing is I'm looking at our screenshot render and then I'm moving this in the viewport to see the effect and the desired effect I want. It might be the case that um, the Omni is attacking things that you don't want. So for example, it's doing the sword up here. But I quite like that effect. It's actually bringing out the normal map and height information I've put in there. So I'm going to keep that light for the time being. Obviously, you can change the brightness uh, to your desired effect. So take that light and drag it into rim support and call it support one. Control D, I'm going to take the other rim light and then put it behind the other ear. Um, I'm picking and choosing what effects I like here, it's sort of bleeding onto the main face. But I think that's, that's quite a nice effect, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, also, I'm seeing that when I move this rim light, it's casting a shadow on top of the flat cork surface. So maybe that could be an interesting light element. So you just got to play around and see how much interest you can put in a flat surface. Another option that we have with these lights uh, that we can change the color. So sometimes in a rim light, it's nice to put a very cool color, um, especially if it's near some metals. It usually has quite a nice effect on it. And so I'm just going to select the both and by eye put a blue sort of like light color in there makes it look a bit more like a, a sky reflective feel. Now what I'd say is that's sort of like the baseline of where I'd start. I'd start to adjust from this point, maybe add some additional lights that you can think of. Uh, finally, what I'm gonna do also is add a fog effect. So that's just gonna give us a nice bit of depth and bring a bit more realism into the volumetrics of the lights that are around this 3D object. So in the top left, uh, there's new fog and it's gonna come in pretty harsh but what you can do is turn it down so you can change things like the distance and also the maximum opacity. So a common uh, mistake that I often see is obviously you've put in a new feature. You really want to see it. So what I suggest is insert the fog and then bring it down to a level to which you can barely see it. Um, so take something where you can see it and usually divide it by two. And that's going to be a nice effect. So the difference is very subtle but we've got some nice uh, light interactions that you can see around the border and things like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to move the camera about, um, maybe change some angles. I might get some better reflectivity, change the field of view. So it's encompassing more of the, more of the area. Also what we can do is once you've got all the lights in and I would definitely save before you do this, but if you come up to renderer, we can make use of ray tracing if you do have the graphics card enabled for it. So click ray tracing over here. Hopefully the thing doesn't crash. So here we go. Um, might be having a bit of trouble because it's rendering literally two here. But what it's going to do is give a more realistic effect. Um, so looking at this as a whole, what could probably happen here is uh, an increase in the light of the face because it's looking quite flat. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. So as you see, uh, because Ray trace rendering is so expensive and it tanks it. We don't want to be moving too many lights around. So we've already constructed our lighting setup. We've made the renderer larger and now we can just use sliders to adjust that, that effect and that visual. Um, so you want to be pretty methodical when it comes to ray tracing. Um, you obviously don't want to slow yourself down. So once you're happy with the final image, uh, what we're going to do is come back to the same renderer. And if you scroll right down to the bottom, you have some output options. So you can start with a, a medium resolution, maybe just like a full screen 1920 but for an anti-aliasing effect. You can double that and then downscale it later. Um, then you'd come up to renderer and then in under viewport or F10, you can render it out. Do remember that depending on the material you have. So if you've got things like green subsurface, that's going to affect the look of your lights. Also, when you add additional lights, add shadows, add different colors, uh, it starts to get a bit convoluted and it's harder to track back and change and adjust the looks. So that's why I really suggest putting things in folders so at any time you can test. So for example, if we remove the rim lights, 
is that actually adding to the scene or do I need it? Or for example, I can hide the primary lights and see where exactly specific lights are applying to the model. So it's really useful to set up that folder structure. In terms of timelines, um, I highly suggest to people to not rush lighting. So give it a lot of time and do some different variations. Um, stress test some images, see if things are lacking. Give yourself feedback, receive other feedback, and then implement that back into the lighting. Also, at any point, if the models aren't working, you can change the model slightly, the pose, the rotation of the angle, the depth of field, the background. And once you get comfortable with this, maybe you can put some motion and keyframes in there, moving specific cameras around that are on tracks, maybe even potentially rotating the sky sphere just so you get a nice sort of like reflection cast over round surfaces. If you enjoyed that video and think you're going to apply that to your future projects please contribute a like so i understand what is working for you guys also subscribe so i'm going to be releasing a lot of video based on the past five years of my content that's been hidden under an nda so i'm looking forward to showing that to you guys also down in the links there's a discord community channel so we're talking about the games industry as a whole um, getting feedback on works in progress and also video suggestions for me to make i do look at those quite a lot and there's other people commenting, which is great to see. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.